Welcome back everybody for installment number two of the oil filter saga. It took me about a day to get all this stuff cleaned up. It was nasty, but it's here, it's ready to go. And I still have the pieces separated, original equipment filter here, field add-on on this side, in the middle, gasket seals, and once you know, filter is still available. Uh, we'll just get into it real quick. I could not believe it, but the filter element for this top add-on can is still available from CAT. Oh, the number in the old parts book was a 5B8934, and it's an 8B5935 right now. And honestly, it looks just about like the one that I pulled out of there. Should be a pretty darn good filter, all in all. And in case you're wondering, you can get like a Wix line. This is a Napa Gold uh, 1169. It's the same dimension filter as that. The old Wix number was 551169. That's not so much uh, current anymore, but the Napa Gold 1169 is basically the same thing. A couple of those there. And then we have the seals that seal these filter cans. So the filter can to the old base is this 5B59, I believe 40. I got it written on here, yep, 5B5940. That's pretty much a standard size for any of these D3400s, regardless of filter setup you got. That should be the number for that seal there. I keep plenty of those on hand. And then the uh, upper seals for what is usually the lid, in this case it's the adapter ring, is the 5B5937. Um, again, I keep, you can see I got a bunch more there, I keep quite a lot of those on hand because all the D3400 filters are pretty good about using those two size of seals. Lastly, new copper sealing rings were applicable, and I made my own gaskets again for this application. Pretty simple, only two required. You have this one for that small side cover, and then you have this other one which seals the oil filter base to the oil manifold. Now, if you know and understand oil flow, and you know what needs to be open, you know what needs to be blocked, it's pretty easy to make your own gaskets and not cause yourself any problems. You can see there's only two main through holes in here, but there's a lot of openings on that base. Easiest way to keep this in perspective, look at the oil manifold. Those are the only two passages that count, one right there, one right there. Make sure your holes in the gasket correspond with the holes in that manifold. Everything else is going to work just fine. Know and understand the flow, you'll keep yourself out of trouble. And hopefully, if I explain this right, you will know and understand the flow by the time we get through it. So to avoid confusion and make things a little bit simpler, I've cleared all the field add-on filter stuff off of the bench. We just have the original equipment filter setup components in front of us now. For this point in time, that's all we need to worry about. Um, oil filter base, like I said before, was made by Perlator. You can see their logo in there. And after I cleaned it off, I found a type K89 with a very crude dash one stamped on the end of it. So I'm thinking the dash one is some sort of design change or modification that was done to suit this Caterpillar. Maybe this was designed with something else in mind, maybe just a different Caterpillar specs. I don't know, but that would explain this unused cover and some other unused features in here. So I'm guessing that, I'm guessing that dash one was part of the design process. Um, really basic oil flow into this thing. Oil comes from the oil pump into this channel here, jogs over, goes down into that passage. That passage intersects with this outlet. You can see the end of the screwdriver in there. That outlet goes to the oil cooler. So oil comes in, jogs over, goes out this top port, gets cooled by the cooler, and then comes in this bottom port. From that bottom port, finds its way into this, what we'll call the pre-filter chamber. Um, fairly simple and straightforward so far. So now to talk about some of the pieces that go in this filter base, we'll start with this poppet valve that I went to uh, such great lengths to remove. That's the one I had to thread the retainer cap in order to get it out. This spring is exerting pressure down on that poppet at all times. You can kind of see it through that little hole right there. This is an oil cooler bypass. So the oil pump is putting oil under pressure into this channel and out this uh, top port. Say the cooler becomes restricted or a line gets kinked and there's a backup. That backup and pressure will unseat that poppet. You can see I'm moving it up and down. Once that unseats, oil can then flow from the valve base into this other vertical channel right here and that still allows oil to get into the pre-filter chamber and still get filtered and still be put into the engine. Without that bypass, a restricted cooler or a kinked line would stall oil flow altogether and it would ruin the engine. 
Now that's also why the base gasket does not need to have a provision for that little hole. That's not a channel that goes into the engine. That's just a drilling passage that goes in to join those two areas. So again, it's all about knowing the oil flow. It'll tell you where the holes in the gasket are going to need to be. So the oil cooler bypass was installed off camera. Now that we have our flow out to the cooler, it comes back in through this bottom port. And you can see the end of the screwdriver in there. The reason we have this hole right here is to provide a passage to drill up and basically jog that oil flow up to about here. And stick the screwdriver in, you can see it up in there. That basically brings it into the pre-filter chamber. And once I got this cleaned up, I was able to tell that is definitely a poppet valve seat that was machined in there. It's not utilized in this uh, application. So you would have had a valve in here with a spring and then this uh, this little three bolt mystery cover would have retained it all. The cover's just there to close off the uh, the base housing. So we know what that cover's for, basically nothing. We know what this plug right here is for, basically nothing other than to block off that vertical drilling. This appears to be just a general drain plug for the whole oil filter base. So that pretty much does nothing. Um, you can also disregard this passage right here that intersects with where that poppet would have been. That would have been like an overflow spill channel, much like the cooler bypass has. But in this case, it's just rather ineffective because once oil gets into where the mystery poppet isn't, <laughs> from that point on, all roads lead to the pre-filter chamber. Last few pieces that go in the filter base, we have this check ball that goes down that center hole. We have the spring, goes in on top of it, and then we have this standpipe. It's hollow all the way through, a couple holes there and there. That standpipe threads in on top of the ball and spring, and the filter strainers. You can see one goes inside the other. Like I said, three thousandths perforations on those. They both go onto the standpipe. So once oil enters the pre-filter chamber, it is forced up. It has to go through one or both of the strainers. They will take out the large particulates. Once it goes through the strainers, it enters into these holes in the standpipe. It is forced down the standpipe and out this top pressure port where it feeds the oil manifold and lubricates the rest of the engine. Now, should the strainers be allowed to get so dirty that they actually become restricted, it is going to back the oil pressure up down into the pre-filter area. At that point, that check ball that's down here below the standpipe will come off the seat. Oil will be able to go through this passage here, past that check ball, and out that pressure port into the oil manifold where at least the engine will be getting lubrication. Uh, that's basically a bypass around the entire filter setup, around the strainers, around the standpipe, um, you're not filtering any oil, you're not trying to clean anything, but it's kind of a last ditch stopgap effort just to keep any kind of oil flowing to the engine so that it runs long enough to hopefully be able to shut it down and get that stuff cleaned out again. All right, time to put the can on. I got the check ball and spring already in the base of the housing. Here's the new seal, goes under the filter can. Got to make sure to get that down in the groove without rolling it. And all I do is just put a film of oil on these. That's usually all it takes. And now the base plate goes into the can and it really doesn't matter where those holes end up because there's enough of a standoff off of the base housing that the oil can find its way in without having any trouble at all. Standpipe goes in now to hold it all together. Strainer elements can go in now, and once upon a time, this was all there was to the oil filter setup. You'd be putting the cap on it, put it on the engine, and you were done. But, lucky for us, we have the field installation auxiliary filter unit that we get to go through now. Adding all kinds of cool factor 
back on to 1113. All right, now to talk about the 6B463 oil filter group for field installation. And this is gonna be a lot simpler than everything we've put into the base filter element so far. Uh, you got this adapter plate right here. It takes the place of the old top lid for the original filter. So we'll just set that on there for now. You would also have this spring and this plate that go on top of that adapter for demonstration purposes. We'll leave the spring out because it can kind of be a handful. This uh, center bolt here goes down through the can, and this plate slides onto the bolt until it contacts that shoulder right there. You can see the end of the bolt is open. It has a passage that's drilled up into it. Ends about right here, um, just above these two spill holes that are 180 degrees apart. So, with that plate on there, we'll pretend the spring is in place. We'll even pretend the filter is on uh, the bolt here. So this pad on the end of the filter will seal against this plate. The, uh, the pad that's on the other end of the filter will seal up against the uh, inside of the can. So when everything is put together, any oil that's still coming from this base unit up the standpipe that goes up through the middle is going to come into this bolt, but it's going to bleed out below this plate because those two spill holes are just below that. So that oil is going to come out and around the outside of the replaceable filter, it will then have to be pushed through to the center of the filter where it will come up the bolt. This piece here is just kind of a centering collar to keep the filter uh, centered during installation. Anyway, that oil is going to come up the center of that bolt, and since the filter is sealed against the, uh, the top side of the can, the only place that oil has to go is out that little hole that leads to the spigot. It goes out that spigot, and it goes down the tube back into the base of the breather assembly and is returned down into the oil pan. Now to assemble the oil filter group, I have the center bolt pinned into the can and the filter just slides over it. Take this end plate, start that on, and we have this spring. Three little legs on that plate kind of hold it. Now, the adapter plate, it has those two hooks that engage with those two pegs on the inside. So we compress the spring, rotate it until the hooks engage. That is a fully assembled oil filter group right there. So all we have to do now, thread that center bolt, start it onto the standpipe in the original filter base. Rotate it so we have the old uh, decal pointed towards the front. That's also going to align our spigot. Tighten the bolt to draw the assemblies together. And that's all there is to it. One fully assembled oil filter that I can barely fit in the frame. <laughs> All right, so we can finally bolt it up. Gasket's in place on the housing. Hopefully I'm getting this whole thing in the shot because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's two feet tall. That bottom stud's kind of hidden behind the port for the oil cooler return. So getting in a few of these fasteners can be fun. All right, and with that, we've got 1113's oil filter sorted out and this thing is just so ridiculously perfect that i'm in love with it to tell you the truth regardless of its efficiency or lack thereof um you know it was kind of a long-winded explanation of how this thing works and how it goes together and the shame of it is that's not applicable to all d3400s it's not a one-size-fits-all it's only good for this particular filter setup right here i mean take this 
book. It's an early parts book. It fits 1113 serial number range. It goes up to 1863. That's only 1938 model year, half a 39. And in this book, there are no fewer than five different oil filter setups from here down. The field installation add-on could be considered a sixth. And you know, we haven't even got to full flow filters, anything like that yet. So unfortunately, most of what you saw down here is only applicable to this unit. If you get into your filter, it's very likely going to be different. So that being said, um, gosh, they were close to the full flow idea right here. Um, we can consider this still a bypass down here because you're not going through both filter elements or uh, strainers, I should say. Uh, it might go through one, it might go through both, you don't know, but then we're still splitting off from the standpipe and getting up into here. The thing of the upper portion here, this was full flow pertaining to everything that got into it. Uh, everything that gets into this upper can is gonna go through that filter. So they were close. I don't know why they couldn't have just taken this idea right here and just put it right here and got rid of the strainers. It is what it is, but Honestly, it's a lot of engineering. It's some field changeover stuff. You know, this uh, this tube, it doesn't fit well. It's hard to get at this fitting. It's close to interfering with things. You can tell this is all add-on stuff, but it's kind of neat anyway. So, all right, guys, that's, uh, that's about it for the oil filter. As always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back again.